Hey hey folks, and welcome to the latest installment of Dave's Impressions. This time around, The Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion. These impressions were taken from playing the game for around 7 hours and 30 minutes. Enjoy! Right away, I knew Oblivion was different from the other games I had played in the Elder Scrolls series. Like the idea of Elder Scrolls was here, but more streamlined in execution. An example is the way skills level as you play. It has the flavor from Morrowind of skills upgrading the more they're used, but it works in a more fluid manner. There's still a level of ridiculousness with some actions such as upgrading speechcraft, but as a system, it's integrated better. The game is set in the capital of the Empire of Tamriel in the province of Cyrodiil. While the spire of the Imperial Palace is present and acts as landmark and beacon from all around the play area, a lot of the structures to be explored on one's travels are in ruin. There are pockets of wealth outside the cities, towns next to castles or clear divisions of the rich and the poor, the majesty of the cathedrals or the splendor of Cloud Ruler Temple in the mountains, the home of the blades. There's a clear division of classes in this land, tension between the rich and the poor, between races from different parts of the world, and the feeling the empire might not be what it once was. The antagonists who make themselves known by assassinating the emperor and his son in order to lower the barrier between this world and the world of oblivion are taking advantage of the fact protections are not as strong or cohesive as they once were. Maybe this line of order and chaos made manifest was always as tenuous. The character models of Oblivion look uglier than I remember them being in Morrowind. If this is the case, the landscape makes up for it. I would jump up on large rocks to oversee the Imperial Spire when the sun was at such an angle to increase its splendor. I enjoyed traipsing through the forests, admiring the architecture of the towns, and even was awed by the desolated wasteland on the other side of the Oblivion Gate. While the country is in ruins, it doesn't mean the ruins aren't worth exploring even if a lot of them are home to bandits. Exploring is the way the player comes across sites worth seeing. A memorable encounter I will share is when a citizen spoke to me out of nowhere. It was late at night and I jumped in my chair. I could only see a faint outline, a shimmer. It turns out the whole town was made invisible because of the experiments of a nearby wizard. In Oblivion, there's a strange mechanic involved with speechcraft where you can make someone trust you by saying what they wish to hear when the corresponding section of the speech table is highlighted. By boosting the wizard's disposition towards me, I was able to find a way to cure the town of invisibility, and he let me know about wearing a ring to protect myself when casting the spell. Stories like this are why when on my own I would never use the fast travel system if I hadn't visited a new location before. Chances are I'd find more memorable adventure on the road than I always did. The towns in Oblivion feel like real spaces. Everyone who lives in the towns has a home, and there's a stark divide between those with wealth and those with little. This divide is even present with the inns catering to different clientele. I was impressed by the amount of detail put into the architecture. The cathedrals are a good example. These mammoth structures are not just impressive due to their size, but their shape. How they were built and how beautiful they are. I spent some time just staring at one from the outside before visiting indoors. Even if I disagree with the way Cyrodiil is being run, it's worth saving the royal line and fending off the Daedra for the purpose of preserving this beauty. Cyrodiil doesn't feel as large as Morrowind, but it feels like there's more purpose. Like I got a better sense of the world with my limited time in it than I have in any of the other Elder Scrolls games. And while the skills and working my way through the world felt more streamlined, I can't say I grew to like the combat. There is fun in the push and pull of sword and shield combat, the dance of moving back and forth, taking a hit on the shield and getting in a couple slashes before it's time to go on the defense again. In my time with the game, I never understood how to parry. The couple of times I did pull it off, it felt wonderful. When the enemy did it to me, it sucked. The bow was a great opener because of the damage modifier from sneaking, and every time a bow shot would drop a foe, I cheered internally. Likewise, when running back from a charging enemy, shooting them and watching them drop. In the Oblivion Gate, the imps were impervious to my sword attacks. 
which meant I had to default to the bow a lot of the time. It took many shots, but hey, at least I could grab the arrows back off their corpses in the end. Overall, I found combat not snappy and precise enough to be enjoyable. The exploration and world were the highlight. So, should you play Oblivion? Well, are you an Elder Scrolls fan? Do you like being dropped into a fantasy world and having free reign? The game suggests a class based on the way the intro dungeon is played. Acrobat felt right for me, but if you want to be a big bruiser or wield different kinds of magic, those paths are open to you too. The plot seems a standard rescue the prince and stop evil from encroaching on these lands tale, but I have a feeling it won't end up as simple. If what you've seen of the visuals appeals to you, there's a lot of adventure to be had here for a player of the right temperament. On the other hand, the game hasn't aged well. It seems like it's heading in the direction of what it wants to be, but it hasn't worked out its growing pains yet. Oh, it's more playable than all the Elder Scrolls games before it, but the systems are not as great as they could be. The whole is greater than some of its parts, and not all players are going to enjoy interfacing with these parts. I will say the direction Oblivion has taken has made me even more curious about Skyrim. As always, I'd love to hear what you think of Oblivion down in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, why not buy me a coffee? There's a link in the description. If you'd like to help me out in other ways, please give the video a like, share it on your favorite social media sites, or subscribe if you haven't already. Until next time, I hope you're all having a wonderful day.